I am going to talk about two-dimensional arrays first. And then I'm going to talk about not two-dimensional arrays, multi-dimensional arrays. Um, and, and I'm just going to show you what does it mean, essentially, um, um, and how it works and how it's managed in C language, like how C language implements it. You already know that arrays in C language are essentially a piece of memory that is pointed by a pointer. We know that, right? We, so just, we've talked about this 55,000 times, but I'm going to say it again and again and again. So an array is essentially if, uh, yes, I am. Thank you. So an array is essentially, uh, if this is the memory, it's whenever you create an array, say if we are actually creating an array in here and saying something like uh, uh, int a uh, uh, 10, if I do something like this, what happens is that somewhere in memory, uh, 10 integers, uh, uh, a piece of memory is, is reserved for 10 integers, and then Another piece of memory we have that is actually a pointer, and we know that pointer is called A, all right, which essentially that pointer points to the beginning of this one. Hence, we're going to have, I hope, I don't know if it's going to be right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Assume that they are equal <laughs> size. So we have 10 elements over here. And that's how uh, um, arrays are created. And, and then we know that that A is a pointer. Um, um, how do we know? We um, had an example. We wrote something like this. We wrote if, and you know how we initialize arrays, right? So if I go over here, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. In 100, if I do something like that, um, I can actually say printf uh, percent d, and I can over here print the target of a. And what's that? What that's going to print in here for us? It's going to print 10 because its target of a is the first element, and 10 is going to get printed. Are we okay with this? Any problem with that? Are we okay with? It? Okay. All right. All right. So. Um, we've, we went through, like, we, we actually, um, you, you did a quiz about this thing and with more input and up, output, and we went through it and we talked about, we, we didn't talk about it, and we know that there are specifiers right now that you can actually uh, use to, uh, to, to print stuff with. These are for printf, right? Which one? Uh, what is this? Printf, printf. I just want to bring the printf stuff. They're all the same, but there you go. Okay, so do we have a percent u that is for unsigned integer. We know that there's a percent p for address. We know that you did the quiz on it, and we have a percent u for unsigned integer. All right, um, addresses in RAM by nature are unsigned integers. When you think about it, you cannot have minus fifth byte, can you? Again, the like number of students in class is a positive number, zero or positive. You cannot have minus three students in a class. That doesn't make sense, right? It's the exact same thing with the address in the memory. Hence, the address of memory either can be shown with P um, that it's, I'll, I'll actually show it to you. So, so what happens is this. If I, if I right now go over here and I go, so printf, I go printf, and I go percent P, and I'll go percent U, and I'm going to display A and A. Because we know the A, that A is the address of the beginning of the array, right? So if I run this beautiful program of mine, the output of this program 50 years later will be, uh, when it compiles, will be those values. But if you look at the output for P, it's hexadecimal. Percent U is more understandable for teaching purposes. Okay, so if you convert this hexadecimal number over here to base 10, you're going to get this. All right, it's essentially hexadecimal. Based. So percent X, percent P are the same. All right, essentially percent capital X, actually. Lowercase x will show everything in lowercase hexadecimal. 
All right. So just to, to, to show you what I mean is that if I do percent x percent x and if I go a and a and so show four a's over here you'll see that uh, the result will be stupid compiler if you know I, I have a why didn't you just put a comma that's one of the that actually one of the objectives of one of my students if the compiler knows where the error is why don't you just fix it <laughs> okay so take a look so when you put hexadecimal, uh, when you put hexadecimal, hexadecimal ignores the leading zeros because it says, like, well, I don't care if it's leading zero, right? Uh, so the first one is lowercase, second one uppercase, and when you put percent %p, it actually shows leading zeros so you can actually identify how big the address can be. And of course, uh, uh, and, and you see that it ch everything changed, right? Every single time that I execute, it's going to be a different number. Now it's 9 to 8 at the end. That's the uh, three things that I'm memorizing right now. And if I execute it one more time, now it's somewhere else in memory. Every single time your program runs, another piece of memory, another place in the memory is allocated, and pointer is pointing to it. Not necessarily the, the integer array uh, of uh, the, the, the array, um, the A or, uh, array that is an integer array will be occupied the same place every sing single time it runs. Every time it goes somewhere else in memory, depending uh, where operating system is loaning out addresses to, to, to programs. Okay? Are we okay with this? Are we okay with this? Yeah. Y your face is uh, unsatisfied with what. Yeah, but, but, but for those who don't know what malloc is, you, it's, it's none of your business. You don't need to know. But when you're saying malloc, malloc is what you do while the program is running. It's not before execution. So halfway through the program, you decide to have some memory. So. You took away the memory and replaced it with malloc? What's the new one that's opposite of malloc? Malloc, free. It doesn't make any difference. See, uh, see, that's the thing. That's the thing. When you write an array, oh, why am I answering this? And what I'm saying is that when you create an array, again, what he was saying is that to do all these things manually, not to have an array, just have a pointer A, and halfway through our program, allocate a piece of memory and make it an array ourselves. It's like you're going to Harvey's and you say, I want a Coke, fries, and a burger. The guy say, why did you say combo number two? I like to do it manually. Okay, that's the thing. Combo number two is like that. The good thing is that about combo number two is that when it's done, they come and clean up your table. Okay, so when you actually use it like that, like an array, you're actually giving all the authorities to the compiler. So the compiler will do the allocation for you and make everything nice and beautiful. And when the program is done, it's done, finished. Okay, but when you do it yourself manually, then you are responsible for it, which means if you forget to free the memory, the memory remains allocated until your, pro, your, your computer uh, reboots. Okay? How many of you guys had to reset your wireless at home when it gets like, or modem at home when it doesn't work? It means the programmer who wrote it forgot to free the memory. Every single time, that's memory leak. Every single time, and it's a very common thing. When they wrote the program, it keeps running and it does the stuff, but it forgets to reallocate the memory. So every time a connection is happening and that it gets reallocated and so on and so forth, leakages of memory remains. And after a while, your modem doesn't have more any, any more memory. Hence, it hangs. <coughs> you take it off the thing, reboot it, put it back on uh, for another week, and. That usually when you have like 20 guests coming home and they all have cell phones and they, what is your password for the wireless? Then you're going to see the day after you have to do the reset because you have 20 extra connections that day. Okay? So that's what happens. Okay? But back to our own story, what I wanted to say, I had nothing to do with what you were saying, is that uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, appreciate that uh, the piece of memory that is allocated for us and the address is given to us, it's in a, in, it's, uh, in a, uh, a pointer, and that pointer is pointing to the beginning of that 
piece of memory, and that is ours and ours only, and nobody can touch it. Okay? And when you're done and finished, it's going to be over. And every single time your program executes, it requests the operating system again. Can I have 10 integers? And this time, somewhere else is empty in memory and free, so it's going to give you that piece of time. So there's no guarantee it's going to be at the same place. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Go ahead. Notation, just notation, absolutely no difference. I just wrote it over there to show you they're all the same. No difference. No, some people like to show it lowercase, they put cat lowercase. I don't know. <laughs> okay. But percent P essentially says fill the left with zero. Okay? All right, so now we know that. As you see, we're going deeper into pointers and stuff to understand how they work. Now, so I'm going to create a pause function in here. How do you write pause? Um, so it's vo void pause void and I'm going to say while get care not equal backslash n and that's a pause okay so I just want to pause and it's a good idea if I put actually the semicolon outside all right so now in here I'm going to say I'm going to do this. I'm going to do percent %u, and I'm going to show address of, say, a2. And now in here, I'm going to say percent %u, u, backslash n, address of a3. So essentially, my program, and so in, and in here I'm going to pause, just to be able to ask you a question halfway through, okay? So my program is going to create an array, initialize it, or not initialize it, doesn't make any difference. I just did that to, you know, give you a reason for an array to exist. So, and then in here, after the array is created, I'm going to say, give me the address of element with index 2, which essentially is this one, right? So it's going to give me this address, correct? Then it's going to pause, and it's going to show me the address of the next one, that is this one. Are we okay with this? Any problem? All right, so let's run the program. Can anybody tell me what is the, the number that's going to be shown next? Hmm? Nine oh eight. Nine oh how many people? That's nice. Beautiful. Nine oh eight. Pardon me? Four bytes. Why? Because an integer is four bytes long. Essentially the address next next one is eight four more. That's clear for everyone? Do we understand that? Are we okay with that? Beautiful. Good. Now we know. And since we know that, now it's, 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 it's probably obvious if I say printf if I say printf percent d backslash n and I put over here target of a 10 will be shown, correct? Right? Now in here, I want to show the next element using a pointer notation. I'm going to say target of a, and I want to add a value over here so it shows the next one. What do you think that, so it shows 20, because that's essentially what it is, right? I'm saying go to the address that, are, that is kept in a, 
print the value, so 10 is going to get printed. Are we okay with that? We're all okay with that. And now with the second one, I'm going to say, go to the address a plus some number and show me what is sitting in there. Go to that target. Now, what do I put over here to get the value 20? Isn't it four bytes? Why did you say one? How many people agree with that? How many people think it's supposed to be four, not one? You think it's four, two. You're both, they're like, you are right because you don't know what pointers are. He's right because he knows how the C language works. Uh, what, like, what happens is that logic says, we just showed you that the address is four more. How can you put one over there? That's the reason we have pointer two specific type. That's why we have integer pointer A. We don't just say pointer A. Why do we say double pointer P and not just pointer P? Because P is supposed to point to a specific type of target. A double pointer can only point to a double. It cannot point to a, I don't know, a car, if it's a structure or, or an integer or a character. Why? Because they want to know if they want to go to the next double, they have to jump size of a double. That is eight bytes, correct? It's the same thing over here. Because compiler knows A is an integer, when I say one, it is one integer, which means size of one integer, which means four bytes. OK? So essentially, if I do this, all right, and I run this beautiful program of mine, you will see that, oh, of course, the pause is going to come over there. I forgot about that. OK? And Yeah, and then uh, it's going to go for further, and it's 10 and 20, all right? Are we okay with that? Now, now the next thing I want to tell you is this. So uh, let's take that pause thingy off. We don't need that. I just wanted to do that so I can ask you the question. Now, the next thing I wanted to tell you is that if I do this, what's going to be the output? What's going to be the output? Go to the address of a plus 0. It's going to be the same thing. It's a stupid question. Of course it's the same thing. I just want to tell you why the array indexes in, in C start from 0. Essentially, every array that you write gets translated to that, and then it's processed. It's just a notation for people who are afraid of pointers. OK? So go to where A is and then go zero integers further. That's why you say A0, and that means the first one. Because you go to the address of the beginning, and you go zero integers further, which means the first one. Then you go to the address of beginning, and you go one integer further, then it becomes the second one, and so on and so forth. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? Are we OK? One, two. So OK, so now that we know this beautiful thing, we're going to do something else. You can, you can actually <coughs> create arrays like this. <laughs> Not like that. Sorry. Undo. You can create arrays like this. So essentially you have, I don't know what is this. Okay. So these are two, two arrays and then you have one, two, three, four, and five. So 
you can actually create a table. OK? And if you create a table, then in this table, you will see that you, yeah, like, um, you can have, so this becomes row, this becomes row 0, this becomes row 1, this becomes column 0, column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. You have 10 integers, right? This one is 0, 0, correct? This one is 0, 1. This one is 0, 2. This one is 1, 3. And this one is 1, 4. I have a beautiful handwriting with a mouse. OK? Are we OK with this? We can actually do something like that. So it works exactly like the other one. So essentially, I can do something like this. I can actually write a code like this, writing integer b. I want two arrays of five each. And I'm going to set it to, uh, how do I do it so it can? I can't put 0, 0, 0, 1, because 0 won't be, won't be shown. Mm, so I'll do it like this. I'm going to say, so there are two arrays. Because there are two arrays to initialize it, you need two arrays. OK? That's how you initialize two arrays. It's an array of two arrays, right? Are we OK with this? And the first one is going to be, so that's 0, 0. I cannot put 0, 0. Can anybody tell me why can't I put 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3 as constant values? OK, going back to the beginning of the semester, if you are writing an integer, a literal value for integer, because? No, if you put, no, it's, no, it's not going to convert anything. Um, um, back to the beginning of the semester, uh, you, you can write, you can write, um, say, you can write 12 in decimal, right? Like when you're writing in, in base 10. What is 12 in base 16? Anybody knows? OK, so you can write C in base 16. What is it in base 8? It has 1 8 in it, minus that, so it becomes 1 4, right? Right? So it becomes 1 4. If you want to actually show this in C language, in here you put 0x, and in here you start with 0. So if you write 0, 1, 4, it means it's base 8. The first 1 means 1, 8. So that becomes actually 12, not 14, because it's 8 plus 4. The other one is C, because it's, C is 12, right? And the other one is 12. Are we OK with this? All right, that's why it's not a good idea to start with zero. So I'm just going to go back and wipe it out and just put regular values in there as the other one. So in here, I'm going to put 10. Oh, that's not 10. 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, and 50. And then in second one, I'll put 60, 70, 80, 80, 90, and 100. OK? Are we OK with this? So essentially, this one is going to be, if I, if I actually put the values in there, then uh, I'm going to have something like this. It's going to be, so this is going to be 10, 20, right, 30, and it goes 40, oh my goodness, uh, 50, okay? And then in here, it's going to go 60. And the last one is going to be 100. I don't need to write it, hopefully, the whole thing. So this is 70, 80, 90, 100. Are we OK with this? All right. <clears throat> now, this is a two-dimensional array, essentially. So to, to actually show the values in that thing, you can actually write printf %d. So if I want to show 
say if I want to show eighty. <laughs> Man, that's a no, it, it, my mouse is not a good mouse, and I don't. It, it, this is if it was a touch thingy, I had a, a stylus I could have written on it, but it's not. Hopefully soon they're gonna change it. This, they actually promised that they're gonna change everything to, to touch, so I can actually draw on that thing with a, uh, and that's gonna be much better. <laughs> All right. So if I wanna show 80 over here, what is the index for 80? It's one, two, correct? If I want to show 100, it's 1, 4, correct? If I want to show, show 10, it's 0, 0. So let's show one of them. So I want to show 80, I'm going to go 1, 2. So I'm going to say B, 1, 1, and 2. So if I actually show that value, I'm going to see it's going to be, so I'm going to actually write over here B, 1, 2. And that's what's going to show. I don't want these pause schmoz thingies. Let's take those things off. Uh, even these addresses and stuff are not needed. We are past that. Let's actually take the whole thing out. <laughs> we know that A thingy. Let's go with this one. So if I run this, now it's going to show actually 80 over there. Are we okay with that? All right. Um, are we okay? Everybody's okay with that? Everybody okay one? Everybody okay two? Yes. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to confuse the heck out of everyone. Okay? And, and um, at the end of the class, I'm going to tell you something very important about the topic that I'm going to talk about today. Okay? Okay, so all we need to do, all we need to understand about multidimensional arrays is that they're nothing but arrays, but arrays of arrays. <laughs> okay, just expand it in your mind. Don't get confused by it. So uh, it, this is a two-dimensional array, but I could have made it simply a three-dimensional array, as simple as that. And it would have worked the same way. I could have made it a four-dimensional array. So essentially, a two-dimensional array is uh, a box, right? A three-dimensional array becomes a cube. It has width, height, and, uh, and length, right? Then I could make it a four-dimensional array. That is, array of cubes. Then I could make that one a uh, uh, five-dimensional array. Then it becomes a, uh, a, a table of cubes. Then I could make it six, then it becomes a cube of cubes, right? So I can keep going. And you can still refer to it using the indexes. It doesn't make any difference. It's exactly the same indices, actually. That's the correct term in English. But hey, I'm. Anyways, are we okay with this? Are we okay? What interests us about to the. What, what is important for us in this uh, scenario is that. This is how we can create an array of strings. <laughs> because if I want to keep 10 names somewhere, how can I do that? A name is essentially in an array of characters, right? If I want to hold 10 names, I need 10, 10 array of characters. And without two-dimensional arrays, it's not possible. Are we OK with this? We, um, yeah, so let's do that. So, and let me pause the recording first. So, we okay down to here? Yes, I'm recording actually. Thank you. All right. So now we know what two-dimensional arrays are. Now, if I told you how to show a two-dimensional array, um, like I, I, I want to show the content of the whole thing, then. That would be very, that was, let's, make, let's make it 15. I'm going to make it three. Two is too short of an array. So in here, I'm going to go, I'm going to create another one. And it's going to be 110. Oh, let me clear everything over here. We don't need that drawing anymore. 
Okay, 120, 130, 140, and 150. Okay, now I have, uh, so it's 15 total. And if I want to actually show this, I need to have uh, integer i and integer j. Now I can go 4i set to 0, jz to 0, i less, uh, i less than, how, how big i can get? This is, it's for the first index, 3, right? Um, sorry, I'm not going to do that here. i less than 3 and i plus plus. So that's going to take i from 0 to 3, right? Then in here, I'm going to have another for loop. I'm going to say j set to 0, j less than 5, and j plus plus. And that's going to take j from 0 to 4. Now in here, I can say printf percent 3d, <coughs> 3d. Um, um, and I'm going to put a space over there. And I'm going to show over here a, uh, sorry, b, i, J. Okay, and after each row is printed, so it starts, I is zero, it, I becomes zero, it comes over here, become, J starts from zero, goes up, so it becomes zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, and then this loop ends and comes over here, right? Right over here, I'm going to say printf uh, backslash n. So I'll go to new line, and I'm going to have a printf backslash n over here too. Right? You okay? So now, now I can act actually show it tabular. So it actually goes through all the data and prints it in a tabular way for me. So it goes 10, 20, yada, yada, 250. Are we okay with this? And if I wanted this to be left justified, you know that I could do this, right? I put a dash over here. And now I have it left justified. So this is the table that I have of numbers. Are we okay? Are we okay down to here? All right. So, uh, 0, 2, 2 dimensional array. Okay. And now let's go to this item thingy that I have over here. Okay. So I have a list of items. I picked it up from some OP244 assignment I wrote a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. It's just comma separated values and it seems good to me to, to work with, okay? So I'm gonna create a structure. I'm not, I'm not gonna create, I am not gonna create a structure for this. I'm just gonna read through uh, the, uh, and pick up the, the names over there in an array, okay? So, so if I want to do that, then in here, I know I have 20 items, right? So I'm going to create an array of strings. Now I know two-dimensional arrays. So I'm going to say character name. I have how many names do I have over there? I have 20, right? I'm going to put over here 40 just in case in future I want to do something. And each name uh, could be, let's say, 60 characters. Okay? Then I'm going to create, I need to skip, I have one integer, one double, and another integer. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to write over here int junk double djunk, okay? And in here, I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to have a loop again, like I do for reading stuff. I am going to say um, a file pointer fptr, and fptr is set to f open of uh items dot txt for reading right fptr file pointer now i have the file opened now i'm going to say a while f scanf out of fptr i'm going to read an integer percent d right now I'm going to add a comma, and I'm going to have a percent up to a comma for a string. Then I'm going to read a double, percent LF. Then I'm going to read an integer, correct? And I'm going to go to new line, 
right? I don't need if I if even if I need that backslash n anymore because the next percent d percent d skips all the white spaces and reads the next thing. So skipping that I don't think means means anything. So I'm gonna put this in address of junk. I don't need that. This one I need. I'm gonna put it in what name i. Okay. So I'm gonna read it in uh, name i, and the other one is a double. So address of d junk. And last one is address of junk. So I'm just going to read those things. And if it is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, then continue the process. OK, so uh, I need an I. So I'm going to create an I. All right. And in here, it's going to be I++. plus plus. Are we OK down to here? So if I do this, I'm going to have all this stuff read. Into an, array, into an array of strings, one by one. So everything's going to go in there, and then I can print them out. So I'm going to say, let's say I want to print the names comma separated. So I'm going to say, um, integer j, uh, printf, percent, S comma, and I'm going to put over here name I, name J, and this is going to be in a for loop for J set to zero, J less than, J less than I and I J plus plus, because that's the number of things I read, and then I'll go to new line. Okay, it's just a test to see how, it, how things work for two dimensional to see if I can actually read all the names and keep it somewhere. So I'll start, build errors, let's see what is the error. Uh, yes, that's true. It would have been nicer if I actually wrote that in a for loop. So let's actually fix that. I'm gonna just write over here for, I set to zero. F scan F being equal to four uh, and I plus plus and semicolon. So I don't have to write a body for it, right? Are we okay with that? So if I did I make a mistake for walking through it? Yes, yeah, sorry. Because I want to walk through it, this gives me a better structure for walking. This goes, goes one by one. Let's do that. All right. So I'm going to um, uh, start it. All right. Um, let's split it into two. So it comes in. Uh, I made a mistake over here, by the way. What, what, was, what is my mistake? Because you're going to have that in your, in your final test, right? Um, we're going to give you a program. You're going to tell us what the mistake is. What is the mistake in this program? I didn't close the file, right? I didn't close the file. The other one was not initializing I. So um, like th it would have been like if I actually do something like this and give you that one, this one has two mistakes. I didn't initialize the I and also, right? And the other one is, so F close, FPTR. Because it's a walkthrough, I'm not testing to see if it's opening successfully and yada, yada. FPTR has a va value, so it's OK. So it reads 1. Now if I look at name over here, the first one is fresh fish, OK? So it actually read the first one. It's actually showing you as an array of, of characters, which is fine. And it's going to go 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And if I look at this thing, You'll see that it's all red like that. Are we okay with this? All right, so it's going to keep going, 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 going. And when it's done, I should have used the smaller sample. Now I is actually 20 because it read 20. Now it's going to print them as a as comma separated value. And the result's going to be like this. Are we okay? All right. So what is another mistake? If, if I said that uh, this program reads the, uh, reads the names of a file and prints them as comma-separated values, 
what is the next problem with this? And that's a very difficult one. If you pinpoint that one, it's really good. Tell me. Can anybody tell me what is the problem with this? If I showed you the output, probably you would know better. But the good thing, it's, it would be nice if you actually, if you actually can, no, stop it. Hmm? Yeah, it's not comma separated value because there's a comma at the end and there's no value after. Comma separated value, so the last comma should not get printed, right? As an exercise, fix that at home. <laughs> okay? So it actually becomes comma separated values. All right. <clears throat> Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay? Questions? Suggestions? Objections? Are we okay? Yes. No. You just fixed it. <laughs> Why is it bad programming practice? So you mean you go one less and then you print the last one without the comma. So you go up to, so you just fixed it. So a comma separated value would have been this I minus one. And in here would have been percent S and name I, name J. Is it? I think it's fine. <clears throat> um, yeah, so. Now that comma is gone. All right? Are we okay? Why didn't I add one to J? Why didn't I add one? Why didn't I write J plus one? Because the condition of a for loop must break to come out, which means j is already more than i minus 1. That's when it stopped. So it's actually the last. So it becomes the i minus 1, and it stopped. And that's the last index. I don't need to. Are we OK out to here? Two-dimensional array, array of strings, so we know that. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, let's pause, break, and then we come back. We'll continue with the rest. Uh, so when we are talking about algorithms, when we are talking about algorithms over here, um, uh, essentially an algorithm is a known solution for a common problem. That is very, that, yeah, a known solution, a, a popular solution, uh, a documented solution for a known problem. So how to bake a cake? It has an algorithm. You have to follow the things. You have to first mix the egg and uh, whatever. You cannot, you know, you cannot first bake it and then get, mix this stuff. You know what I mean? You have to follow certain rules and regulations. To come to school, it needs an algorithm. First you have to open the door of the house, then get into the bus, then take the bus that comes to school and then get off the bus. You cannot first go to the bus and then take the, open the, the door of the house. It doesn't work. Okay, you have to, you have to follow the things properly. So um, known algorithms for uh, common, uh, that's, that's my own definition of it. I don't know if, if it's in any book or not. That's the difference between a, a program that you are writing for something and an algorithm, all right? And we have many different uh, uh, algorithms are essential to the way computers process data. I don't think that's uh, uh, the finish of an algorithm, but that's why algorithms are there. Yes? Uh, could we say that uh, the C libraries contain algorithms? Of course. Yeah, we have actually libraries that they, they literally hold algorithms. Um, so, um, yeah. yeah. 
No, no, the C libraries are not algorithms. So like printing is not an algorithm. An algorithm is, so if what you are saying means that Java, if Java printed exactly like C, then printf would have been an algorithm. It is not. They have a different way of printing stuff. So when you, a commonly used, a commonly uh, used task in a language, it's a function. So you write a function because it's a task that everybody's using to print. They want to print something, but it's written only for C language. You cannot use printf in COBOL. Algorithm, Algorithm, it means it's the same way in C, Java, COBOL. So you get the algorithm and using like, like algorithm to sort things, which means I have names, I want to sort them alphabetically. It's the exact same thing in Pascal, C, Java, C Sharp, JavaScript, anywhere you want to use it, you use the exact same method. That is called an algorithm. Yeah, exactly. So essentially, you just look at the pseudocode and you translate it to C. You look at the pseudocode, you translate it to C sharp, you translate it to COBOL, you translate it to whatever language you want. Okay? And that's, I don't know anybody's going to translate anything COBOL in these days, but, <laughs> but anyways, right? So, so now we understand what the algorithms are. So let's go and come back and then we're going to do some cool stuff. So I changed the program, as you see. I'm actually reading the SK. So I had a parallel array. I have a parallel array now. I have an array of SKUs and I have a name. Okay? SKUs and name. That's what I have over there. Are we okay with that? Okay, let's see how quick I can do this. What is an algorithm over here? When we are talking about the algorithm, what does it mean? Um, you have already seen an algorithm that I had called a linear search. What is a linear search? You read one by one to see if it's a match. Ta -da, you find that that's a linear search. And you start from the beginning, you go to the end. A linear search, the best case scenario is the first one that you want, that, that you see, it's what you get. So that's the quickest way that you can get. And the worst case scenario is that you can't find anything. So it has to go through the whole data to, find, to guarantee you and tell you that it can't get anything. Okay? Now, there are so many different types of algorithms out there that you can actually see that they do things for you, okay? One of those algorithms is, um, like one of, one, of, <clears throat> one of the problems that have many different algorithms is called, it's sorting. You want to put things in ascending sort order, descending sort order, and you want to sort them, okay? If you want to do something like this, there are different types of algorithms for it. The most popular one that everybody understands easily at what it is called bubble sort. Well, bubble sort is, they call it bubble because bubbles keep, like, I don't know. It looks like that it's like bubbles that are going to the surface of the thing. It, I don't know if, uh, how it's uh, really is that, but that's, that's what it is. So <clears throat> essentially, with bubble sort, what they do is this. They have, the, they, they have all this stuff in an array like that, and it's just mixed, right? And they want to actually sort this thing. So what they do, one by one, they compare the neighboring things. <clears throat> like, for example, I want to do an ascending sort and make sure everything over here is ascending, right? So what do I do? They compare, I compare these two things side by side. And are these two the, are these two the same? Are these two uh, sorted properly? Yes, so I'm not going to touch it. Then I'm going to check these two. Are these two sorted properly? Yes, I'm not going to touch it. Are these two sorted properly? No. So they replace the two neighboring things. So they actually put this one over here and put this one over here. And they go, now they compare these two, five and three. Are they sorted properly? No. Three should come before, right? So they actually move it. They put it over here. They put it over there. And then do the next. Are these two sorted properly? No. So what they do, they save it and they put it in the first travels through the array, always the biggest element is pushed to the end. Because it compares the two one by one and it keeps going, right? So it, whichever is the biggest, it's going to just push to the end. So the second time that they are going through this array, 
they're going to go one less because they don't need to change the last one. They're sure that that's, that's the right one. So now they compare again. They come back for the second one. So if I have five, then I need to do it four times. Five elements. So now they compare these two. Okay. Compare these two. Not okay. They fix it. Compare these two. Okay. No, not okay. So it will put it, fix it. Compare these two, okay, not okay, they fix it. And they stop because it's one less now. They don't need to compare the last two, okay? Now the second one is pushed to the back. Then they do the next one. Compare the two, okay, not okay, they fix it. Compare the two, okay, yes, no touch. Compare the two, okay, not okay, they push it back. And they just stop. They don't need to do the next one because it's pushed to the back. Now compare the two, okay, not okay. Compare the two, okay, not okay, they fix it. They're not going to go further. Compare the two, okay, fixed, done, it's sorted. Okay? That's bubble sort. So essentially, a nested loop. Okay? As simple as that. So let's sort the, sort the data that we have based on, sort the data that we have based on the SKU. Okay? So I want to sort the data that I have a parallel array over here, and I want to sort the data based on the SKU that I have. So what I need to do over here is to write the sort. So I'm going to say over here, uh, oh, let me actually uh, first uh, print it, SKU I uh, J you know what, let's actually do this. I'm going to say uh, void print items. And I'm going to have over here an integer pointer for SKU. SKU, and I'm going to have an integer uh, pointer for the names, right? When you want to pass a two-dimensional array to a function, see, when I want to pass when I want to pass, when I want to pass a single dimension array to a, to a function, what do I do? I simply pass the address of the beginning. So everything is accessible, right? And I'll make sure, because I want to print it, I make sure I'm going to make it a constant so I don't change it. Now, so I do like this. You know that, right? For a two-dimensional array, what you need to do, you need to pass the address of the beginning, right? But there is one problem, okay? You need to tell to the function how big are the chunks that it has to skip. See, if I am passing an array of 40, 61 length uh, strings, I have to tell to print items that each array is 61 in length. So it has the address of the beginning, so it can find the next one and the next one, and the next one. We know it's a single dimension array, right? And it's pieces, uh, and it's cut into pieces, right? So that's what you do. Whenever you are passing, if you don't understand the explanation that I gave you, just remember, when you are passing a multi-dimensional array to a function, you have to write all the indexes that are in the array except the first one. The first one should be empty. So if I want to send the names over here, I'm going to say character. Of course, constant, because I don't want to change it. Character, let's call it an M for name, OK? And then the first one is empty. The second one is 61. So it says, I'm going to receive I don't know how many arrays of 61 characters. So it knows how to skip and go to the next one. Otherwise, it doesn't know where the next, uh, uh, 60, where, where the next array of strings are, right? And if it's a three-dimensional array, then you've got to pass, put, like, if I have two arrays of three by five, then you just let the first one empty and put three by five. It means I'm, I'm getting so many three by five integers. I don't know how many. Okay? Always leave the first one empty. Yes. Where does this go? To which array does this go when it saves it? 
array num that is array uh, array that is declared in in number in line number seven. Yeah, it's in the forty part, right? It, it saves it in the first part of the array, right? Yeah. So it says name zero. Well, it means the first sixty-one characters. Then it becomes name one. It becomes the second sixty-one characters. Then when it becomes two, it becomes the third sixty-one characters. Of course it knows. Okay. So essentially, name zero is 61 characters long. That's why when you make it name one, it jumps to next 61. And it keeps going like that. All right? All right? And because of that, I have to pass it like that to an array. So I'm going to call this one S and the other one an M. And I'm going to bring this for loop over there. So and here I, what did I do? Did I? What's wrong with me? All right. So now what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to say, uh, uh, and, I, um, and of course, I need to know how many items I have. So integer number, number of items, or I'm going to say num. Now I'm going to have integer i, and I'm going to say 4, i set to 0, i less than num, and i j, because I want to copy and paste. <laughs> J set to zero, J less than num, num, and J plus plus, if I can type it, and J plus plus. All right? And in here, I'm going to do this printing. OK? So it's going to print the SKU, and it's going to print the name. So that's SJ. And there is, this one is an MJ. And because I mentioned that it's 61 characters, when it's zero, it's going to print the first one and the second one, and it keeps going like that. And oh, this is SKU. I'm going to make it this. OK? So this, this one is single dimension array, no problem with it. This one, when it's zero, it means the first 61 and the second 61 and the third 61, and it keeps going like that. So it's going to print it. The reason I did that, I, because I, I have to keep printing it to see if, how it works. So in here, I'm going to say print uh, items. In here, I'm going to say SKU, and I'm going to say name. And how many? It's uh, J many, right? Just to test and see if it's OK, I'm going to quickly run it. Control F5. And three years later, oh, I have a problem. It's I, not J. Right? Control F5. It didn't work. Something's wrong in here. Does it? My apologies. Thank you. I think I'm going to get a good mark in that thingy. That <laughs> okay, so there you go. So these are the, these are the SKUs and the, and the items related to them, right? Now I want to sort these, okay? So if I want to sort these things, what do I need to pass to it? Okay, first of all, because I want to sort, it's a parallel array, I have to sort the names too, which means if I want to sort, sort based on SKU, when I'm swapping the SKUs, I have to swap the names too, right? OK? So when I'm sorting, I have to pass two arrays to it, not one. So my sort function works exactly like this, essentially. All right? But it's not constant. That's the only difference. So this is not const. This is not const, because I have to change them. And this is sort items. Sort items SKU, OK, to, to, to show that it's done uh, on, uh, based on SKU, all right? So uh, because it's not constant, when I'm actually moving them, I need to move. Now, when you want to swap the value of two things, like let's say I have that cup of this. Let's say this is, sorry, let's say this is hot chocolate, and that's coffee. I want to swap the two. I want to put the coffee in this one and hot chocolate over there. How, do, how can I solve this mystery? 
Yeah, I have to actually ask him because it's double cupped over there. I can get one of the cups that he has over there and it's big enough to hold it. So first I'm going to put the, the hot chocolate in there. Then I'm going to put the coffee in here. And then I'm going to put the hot chocolate back in there. And I swap the value up too. Are we okay with this? That's how swapping happens. Bon appetito. Okay, so, so because I want to do the swapping in here, I need a temp thing for int. So I'm going to say int i swap. That's not from Apple, it's just it means integer swap, okay? And the other one is uh, a name, right? So I'm going to call that one character uh, s swap. Character s for heaven's sake, it's for swapping. And it's going to be 61 because that's the size that it needs. And integer... Uh, I, uh, integer n is for to, to, to swap those things. So uh, these are for swapping. All right. Then I'm going to write the loops. So I need to do the loops twice, right? So I'm going to need, I'm gonna need a, a, an index for the outer loop. That's integer i and integer j, right? Then what do I need to do? I need to start from, see, if, if I bring this back up, how many elements do I have over here? One, two, three, four, five, six, correct? How many swaps do I have to do for a complete set for the first one? No, no, don't, don't, not in this case. Assuming that I have to, how many comparison I have to do over here for swapping? When I have six items? Five. It's one, two, three, four, and five. When it's six, I need to do the testing right, five times. Okay, so, so it means, which means, which means, is this the one? Yeah, I don't know. I, uh, anyway, so which means it, the first loop that I have for i set to zero, i less than num minus one. I should not go up to num. I should go num minus one because I'm doing the, the comparison thingy, right? i plus plus, right? Now, the next time I'm doing this, the next time I'm doing this, I have to do the J thingy, right? For J set to zero, J less than something, J plus plus, and in here I have to do the if uh, not sorted, then in here I have to do swap, right? That's what I have to do. And I have to keep doing this until it's done. But the second one, how far I should go? Always one less than the other time, right? So I have to see how far I went, and I have to go one less than that, because the bottom was always sorted. Remember that? So I need to go one less. So in here, all I need to do is to go num minus i minus 1. Because if i is 0, it means I have to go all the way. If it's i is 1, it means I have to go one less, and it keep going like that. Are we okay with this? And I have to do it so many times. And now, how, how to see if it's sorted or not. So, I, I have to compare neighboring things, neighboring elements. So I have to say s i, and I compare that one with s plus 1, correct? S so S0 and S1, S1 and S2, S3 and S4, correct? Now, when, is it, when it is not sorted, I want to do it ascending, which means if I is less than I plus 1, everything's good, right? Sorting should happen if I is greater than I plus 1, correct? So if it's not sorted, so I have to say if it's greater than that, then do the swap. The first swap, how does it work? I'm going to say, I have the temp thingy. I'm going to say that's uh, his coffee over there, the double cup thingy. So I'm going to say over here, n is set to si. Now si is backed up, so I'm going to say si is set to si plus 1. And now that s plus 1 is in its place, I'm going to say si plus 1 is set to n. Correct? Are we okay with this? 
Are we okay with that three lines? Are we okay? Who is not okay with that line? It's the exact thingy that we did with these three cups over here, right? And now, because the SKU over here is switched, I have to do the exact same thing to their uh, product names. So product names, I know that they are not single entities. So I have to use the string header file for that. So in here, I'm going to say, what do I say? What do I say? What do I say? I'm going to say include string.h first. Now, I'll do str copy into s from name i. And now name i is copied, is backed up. So I'll go str copy into name i, name i plus 1. And now i plus 1 is backed up. So I'll go str copy into name i plus 1. And I'm going to put s. Are we OK with this? And that's going to sort them. So now I can actually print them then sort them, sort SKU name and I again, and then print it again to see if it's sorted properly. And test the beautiful program of mine and get the errors. What are the errors? Redefinition of parameter S. Huh? What? Oh, I have, oh, damn it, str, 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 uh, am I clear? Am I good? I think I'm good. There you go. So I should have drawn a line. So it starts with 275 and comes down, oh, God, let me just. I needed that uh, backslash in. All right, one more time. And now if I look at it, it's like this and starts with everything. And, and over here, well, it happens that the first one is actually the smallest one. And two, it goes two, three, four. Oh, something is wrong. You see? What did I do wrong? Let me just see what did I do wrong. Hmm. If so, what did I do wrong? J starts from I, goes plus plus, J, J less than. Yeah, it's supposed to be okay, actually. What did I do wrong? J. Mm -hmm. There's some stupid mistake somewhere. You know, can anybody tell me what did I do wrong? <laughs> no, I I think I made I made an extremely stupid mistake and it's laughable in uh, actually, that's another good thing for the, for the, <laughs> when I looked at it, I'm like, seriously, I did that? <laughs> it's a very stupid mistake. <laughs> and I can't believe I'm recording this. <laughs> Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this? <laughs> yeah, it is in the screen. <laughs> that was a good question. Yes, it's the thing that traverses through the thing is J, not I. It's the J that is going back and forth. That I is just repeating the whole testing. So now which one is easier to change? All these I's or just the loops? <laughs> uh, I'm going to make this one J, J, and J, and make this one I. So <laughs> I, 
I, J, and I. Okay. <laughs> and then run it again. <laughs> My apologies on that. I. <laughs> Anyways, now it's actually sorted from. Okay, a little time. Because the, the outer loop was just repeating the sorting thing several times, right? We, we, the sorting thing was supposed to be done. So now it's actually sorted properly. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? One, two, so, okay. Now, now that I've done this, it's a very expensive type of sort, the sort that I have done. Look how many things I'm copying here and there. And copy like, like, like the, the, the strings I keep going back and forth. First of all, we don't do parallel arrays anymore. So let's change that one to, to structure. So let's do the sorting thing. I'm going to say 0, 1. As I hope I have time to finish this. 0, 4. I'm going to call it bad sort. That's it. That's C. So you know it's sort. Not, um, not bad sort. Expensive sort, I could have called it. Yeah, it's expensive sort. It's not bad sort. So expensive sort, OK? And first of all, let's have a structure to read these things in a structure. Why we are doing this? Like, we, have, we know that parallel arrays are a thing of past. We don't, we don't do that anymore. So first, we need, a, uh, we need to get a structure to read these things. I think we already have something. Uh, this search thingy that we had, it was reading in a structure, right? SQ, price, and everything. Remember that? We had read product and we had search product. Remember that? So we have already something over here in place. So I'm going to use that one. And uh, I'm just going to add a junk over here. So in here, I'm going to say int junk. That's for the last thing that it had. So this junk thingy, I'm going to put over here percent %d. So that it's, uh, let me just copy this right over a, c, and I'm going to, OK. So we have a structure for product. We had a read product. We got an input file, and we got the product, right? We were reading it. It reads. And uh, if I look at the, the items that I have over here, if I look at the items that I have over here, uh, the items are, so it's essentially SKU, uh, name, price, and this is if it's taxed or not, which I do not care at this moment. So, or we can just put it in a structure. That's easier. Let me just put over here in text. Text, okay? Just, I'm just adding one thing. And um, so at, in here, I'm going to read the percent D, and I'm going to put it in tax one. So. I'm going to put address of address of p that points to uh, taxed. There you go. So taxed is read too. So let's close this one now that we know. So it's reading everything that's fine. Search product we do not need. Instead, we're going to have sort, but in a cool way. Uh, print product is printing it. And we need to have a tax over here added to. So I'm going to add two spaces over here and simply a bar. And I'm going to say over here, text. All right. And put a bar over here and some spaces over here like that. Oh, I think this is good. Um, that's the title. And when I'm printing the product, printing the product, I need to print the tax thingy. So in here, I'm going to put uh, percent s all right and in here I'm gonna say uh, product text if that's true print yes if not print no is that okay for everyone okay yes OK, give me line number. Uh, OK, what am I doing in here? Oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, 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 yes. That's four. Thank you, thank you. So now it's yes. So it's almost OK. 
I'm, ha I'm opening the file. The file is not data.txt, item.txt, items.txt, and I do not want to write anything anywhere. I don't know why I have that name over there, so it could not open the file. This is going to read all the file, close the file. It's going to go right into the products, and we're going to have the number over there. Uh, I don't want to search. Now, I want to have all these items. Listen to me. I want to have these items sorted on price, name, and SKU at the same time. How can I do that? So the SKU and, uh, and uh, name and price. So I want to sort them on all three and have them have all the data. Have them all in hand without, without changing the real order of the product. So I want the product array to remain unchanged. But I want to have them sort and print them out. How can I do that? You know it. It's actually very simple. How do I do that? It's like this. Take a look. So say... Say this is, say this is your product array. One, two, three, four, five, six products. And they're big fat things because each of them is a structure with lots of stuff in it, right? All I need to do is to create one little array of five pointers to products. One, two, three, four, and five. Make the first one point to this one, and the second one point to this one, third one point to this one, fourth one point to this one, Oh, actually I actually had six. I thought I had five. Five. And I'm going to add six. No sweat. So that's the sixth one. Okay. And that's going to point to this one. Correct? Right? Now, if I want to sort, the way I sorted before that I said expen was expensive, I was switching everything in the array. I was copying all the characters back and forth to make everything in order. Why do I do that? If I want to sort properly, all I need to do without moving that many data, I can actually sort the arrays that are, the, the pointers that are pointing to them. So I can say the first one, if this is the smallest one, this one should point to this one. If the next one is this one, the second one is pointing to this one. And this one is pointing to that one. And this one is, oh, sorry. And this one is pointing to this one. And this one is pointing to that one. And this one is pointing to this one. So essentially, first this is going to get printed. Then this is going to get printed. And it keeps going like that. So I sort the pointers. Each pointer is only four bytes. It's an integer. Much less things to get swapped around. I don't have to worry about anything like that, right? So all I need to do for every single sort that I want to have, I created an array, I create an array for it. So an array of pointers. So you want to have, so first of all, let's make it 100 products. I don't want to go be over dramatic. But, but if I have 100 products that I want to sort, all I need to do is to say struct product uh, pointer, OK? I want to sort it by SKU, right? I'm going to say by SKU, 100. This is not 100 products. This is 100 pointers to products. You follow? Are we OK with this? All right? And then 
I'll keep going with the next one. So, so I'm going to just do it with that one, and then you, you'll, you'll see what I mean. So if I want to sort struct by name, so I'm going to go product by name 100. OK? And while I'm reading these stuff, you see one by one is reading the product, right? So while I'm reading the product, I not only put the product, read it and put it in the product, but also I'm going to say by SKU, num will be set to prod num. OK? And also by name but remember these are not these are not structures these are pointers so i'm going to put the address of every and each in that one and voila so when this thing is closed and it's done right after this i have the big fat product set and two of these red thingies that are pointing to one by one of them so if I go through the pointers, it's as if I'm going through the, through the products. OK? Now, if I want to actually sort them and go through them, then I have to, I'm going to write, I'm going to write that process right over here, OK? So I'm going to write four. Uh, so I need two integers. I'm not going to write a separate function for it, uh, and I'll tell you why because that's going to kind of blow your mind. I'll tell you why later, but not now. So I'm going to say integer i, integer j, all right? So, so now I'm going to say 4, i set to 0, i less than num, and i plus plus, right? Oh, num plus 1, because we are doing sorting, right? And the other one was 4, j set to 0, j less than, what is that one? Uh, num, num minus i minus 1, right? And j plus plus, right? And now I'm going to actually sort them all at once because it's doing testing for every each of them, right? So first I'm going to write for the SKU. So I'm going to say if by SKU, by SKU, I, that points to SKU, is, we want to do sorting, uh, ascending. So if it's greater than the other one, OK, I have to swap, right, SKUs. And I'm going to do the exact same thing over here for the other one. So in here, I'm going to sort by name, right? So I'm going to say 4. Did I put I again and nobody said anything? And everybody's quiet. Yeah, they didn't make a mistake, and I know. OK, so now I'm going to say, uh, not 4. Um, I'm going to write an F statement. I did the 4 already. So in here, I'm going to write the second if, if SDR compare of by name i, that points to name, this swap thing is actually causing error. Let's take it off. So I have by name, right? By name, yes, i, that points to name. And by name, i plus 1, i plus 1, that points to name. Oh, yeah, thank you. I don't know why I like i. There's something with i and. Yeah, that's j plus 1, that's right. But you get the idea, right? So, and that's uh, string compare. So if this is greater than 0, it means if it's not sorted that way. I don't know why it's giving me error over here. I have by name. Huh? Huh? 
25. Shh, stupid compiler. <laughs> okay, so now I have the name. So now I do the swapping over here, but when I do the swapping, what do I do swap with? I'm going to go struct product pointer swap, okay? And in here I'm going to say because they're all the same, they're all pointers to thing, right? So swap is equal to by SKUJ, right? And then by SKUJ will be set to by SKUJ plus one. And by SKUJ plus one becomes the swap thingy. And I'll do the exact same thing over here for the other one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The difference is that instead of by SKU, it's going to be by name, right? Okay. And now both arrays that are actually pointing to the, oh, it's 318. We have to go. They are all sorted. I'm going to finish it and I'm going to print it out. Okay. And that's all. All right. So we're going to come the next day. We're going to fill in the blanks. I'm going to see what is needed uh, for the lecture. And don't forget uh, to study for the quiz. Have a beautiful day. I'll finish it and I'll put it up.